Bubba Wallace is out of the 23 car. No, that does not mean he's out of 2311 racing. All right, don't get some of your hopes up for some people. No, he will not be driving the 23 car for the remainder of this year. In fact, 2311 racing will be having a driver swap. Bubba Wallace will drive the 45 car Ty Gibbs will drive the 23 car. Why for the change? Well, it's because it's a very unique situation that the team is in. Obviously, Kirk Busch, who won at Kansas, which originally granted him a spot in the playoffs. Then Pocono happened, and he has a concussion and has been sidelined ever since, back on July 10th. Well, we do know that he forfeited. He took back his playoff waiver, granting him uneligible to compete for the championship this season. Originally, Ty Gibbs was driving the 45 car in place of Kirk Busch. But here's the interesting part. Now Bubba Wallace is uh, no longer part of the playoffs. After Daytona wasn't able to score a win, he's now racing for a championship in the driver's championship. However, 2311 Racing is still eligible for the owner's championship because Kirk Busch did win a race. There's two championships. There's a driver and an owner's championship. They basically do the same thing. They have the same format. It's just with the owner's championship is just the car number. It doesn't matter who's driving. It's like the Xfinity series. With, I think it was the 54 car. Doesn't matter who's driving it. It's a part of the owner's championship. So because of that change, and since Bubba Wallace has more experience and has momentum on his side, they decided to put their focus with uh, Bubba Wallace in the 45 car to get the best possible result for the 45 team in the chase for the owner's title. Steve Oletta, the team president of 2311 Racing, said, quote, After consulting with NASCAR, we made this decision in the best interest of the entire organization and for all of our employees who help earn a spot in the playoffs for the owner's championship through their hard work. While Ty has done a great job for us in the number 45 car, we feel that Bubba's experience in the car at the upcoming playoff tracks and his recent momentum will give 2311 the best chance at maximizing our points each weekend. We recognize this is a unique opportunity in the Cup Series, and we're grateful for our employees and partners for standing with the team and supporting this decision. Now, that is the only thing that's going to be changing is Bubba to the 45, tied to the 23. Sponsors will stay at their respective sides, I'm assuming. Actually, yes, they would be staying their respective sides since Bubba's got Dr. Pepper, Monster Energy. They would collide. So... All the sponsors that was going to be on the 23 will go to the 45, if I'm not mistaken, and vice versa. Uh, Bubba keeps his crew, you know, his pit crew and his crew chief. Ty keeps his guys. So no, no change except a driver swap in terms of the numbers. And yeah, honestly, even though it's uncharted territory, I don't think this has ever happened before. Maybe, I think the last one was maybe 2008 when David Rudiman, who started at the double zero car and ended in the 44 car, but... It's very rare. It's a unique circumstance where you are not part of the driver's championship, but you're part of the owner's championship. And this move, it makes complete sense. Bubba Wallace, he has more experience than Ty Gibbs and has some momentum on his side. So if you're going to try and maximize your points for the championship, it would make sense for you to go with Bubba Wallace. It just does. I mean, Ty Gibbs, don't get me wrong. He has put him some really good results, some strong runs. But again, if you're going by experience, if you're going by just momentum side and a lot of things just point to Bubba driving the 45 car instead of Ty Gibbs. Now, as far as I know, this is only going to happen for the remainder of this year. Next year, Bubba will be back in the 23 car and Ty or Kurt, whatever is going on in that 45 car, will get that spot next season. But I think this all but confirms more than likely that Kurt Busch will not return for the remainder of the 2022 season. I think it's a good thing. I don't I don't see maybe the last two races to get, you know, get uh, get Kurt's feet wet again, you know, get back to the comfort of driving a race car. But other than that, I see no reason for Kurt to come back at the end uh, for the remainder of the season. You don't want to jeopardizing your health again. Just take the rest of the season off and get more time under your belt to recover so that you're fully you know, ready to come back to racing if he wants to for 2023. But if Kurt were to come back, let's say for those final two races, more than likely he would take over the 23 car, depending on how Bubba's doing in the 45 car. But yeah, it's a very unique change, but I think it's the right decision for 2311 racing to be able to maximize the amount of points they have under the situation that they're in. Also, Jeremy Mayfield on Jeremy Mayfield got his second career win five years to the day of his first win at Daytona last weekend. Well, as of right now, don't count anymore. Unfortunately, his team failed post-race inspection, and as a result of that, his win has been stripped away. Well, basically encumbered. I know that word's not used anymore, but he keeps the trophy, and I think keeps the prize money, but the win won't count, points won't count, none of that will count, which, if that's the case, Timmy Hill should get the win. I'm sorry, but if he failed post-race inspection, 
Timmy Hill should be the winner. But anyways, NASCAR stated that they penalized Clemens team for an intake manifold violation that was found during post-race inspection. The violation was filed at NASCAR's R&D Center. And like I said, Clemens victory will now not count towards playoff eligibility. Yeah, so basically the intake manifold did not comply with NASCAR's, you know, template, you know, and uh, instructions on how the intake manifold should look like when it comes to be race ready. It wasn't in compliance with that, so NASCAR penalized them. The floor of the intake manifold must fit into an opening. Uh, the depth of it must be four inches. So it can be that or less than uh, one thousand five thousandths of an inch. Now, of course, Jeremy Mayfield, considering how big this would be for his team, of course, no surprise, he appeals the penalty. He said that during NASCAR's teardown process of our Daytona engine, our intake manifold was found to be too short from the carburetor face to the bottom of the plenum. This deviation restricts power to the motor, eliminating any positive impact to the motor's performance. We are appreciative of NASCAR's thorough inspection process and look forward to the opportunity to have our voice heard. We appreciate the continued support from our fans and partners as we allow the process to play out. So right now, at the moment, at the moment, he keeps his playoff spot. At the moment, since it is going to be appeal, goes through a process, um, he gets to keep the playoff points as of now, as well as his crew chief. Originally, the team would have been fined 75 driver and owner points, as well as 10 playoff points, and his crew chief would have been fined $60,000 at the moment. Uh, obviously, through the appeal process, that will be pushed back until a final decision has been made. But again, uh, I don't understand. I know the, I think the Xfinity and Truck Series have different sets of rules compared to the Cup Series, obviously with this next-gen car, new rules apply there, but I don't understand why he gets to keep the win, you know, and keep the uh, keep the money and everything like that. If you fail post race inspection, you should not deserve any anything. You don't. You shouldn't deserve the trophy. You shouldn't deserve the pay money. You shouldn't deserve points. None of that stuff. So, okay, if there were a, uh, very rare, very very rare, do things like this get reversed, get overturned by NASCAR? But in the smallest chances, if it does, fine, he gets to keep his win. But more than likely, that appeal is going to stand. And if the appeal does stand. T T Timmy Hill should get the win. He should get the points. He should get the trophy. He should be the winner, not Jimmy Clemens, unfortunately. I mean, I like the underdogs winning, but if you break the rules, if you're if you fail post-race inspection, then you don't deserve the trophy. You don't deserve none of that stuff.